Lesson 9.5b Congruent Figures We have learned that segments and their images have the same length and angles and their images have the same measure under a translation, reflection, or rotation. Two figures are said to be congruent if one can be obtained by the other by a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. When we are told that two figures are congruent, there must be a sequence of translations, reflections, and or rotations that transforms one into the other. So here we have some transformations from a previous video. We started here and did a reflection across the x-axis, then it translated to the left, then it reflected across the y-axis, it translated up, and then it had a rotation of 90 degrees. We can identify a sequence of transformations that will transform figure A into figure B. To transform figure A into figure B, we need to reflect it over the x-axis and translate B to units right. A sequence of transformations that will accomplish this is the x and y coordinates will map to a negative x and then y. So remember, when we reflect across the x-axis, we multiply the x-coordinates by a negative 1, so we get a negative xy. And once it's reflected, we'll have our xy-coordinates translate two units to the right, so we're going to do x plus 2 and our y-value. We can identify a sequence of transformations that will transform figure C into figure D. To transform figure C into figure D, we need to rotate negative 90 degrees, which would put us here, and that would be about the origin. Now remember, negative rotations go counterclockwise, so we're going to come down this way. But after the rotation, it's still not lined up, so we'll need to translate it up to 1, 2, and to the right 2. 1, 2, to slide it into place. The sequence of transformation involves a 90 degree rotation, a translation plus 2 for y to move upwards, and a translation plus 2 for x to move right. We'd have our x, y coordinates that would map to a negative y, x. We multiplied y by negative 1 and we swapped their places, we switched their places. Then we would have the x, y coordinates, and it would map to x plus 2, y plus 2, to move it up and to the right. We can identify the sequence of transformations that transformed figure E into figure F. The sequence of transformations that changes figure E to figure F could include a 90 degree rotation about the origin. and a translation downward. A sequence that would accomplish this is the x, y coordinates that would map to y negative x. So remember, to rotate 90 degrees, we would do x times negative 1 and then swap them. That's how we got y, then negative x. Then, once we did that, we would translate it with our x, y coordinates would map to x, y minus 5. So we went from here, and we rotated it around the origin as the center of rotation, 90 degrees, and then we translated it down so it was in place at F. Here we have a rotation about the origin with a distance from the origin. The origin is going to be our center of rotation. Here we have a rotation about the origin with a vertex on the origin. So it just spins around with A coming down here to A prime in the same place at 0, 0, the origin. Now for this one, in order to make sure you understand what, what's happening when we have a rotation about the origin with a distance from the origin, I made this little cutout, and we can put it here, and I made this little arm on here as the distance that we're going to rotate about the origin. So normally this wouldn't be here. I'm just using it to show you that this is the length of the distance. So here we have ABCD, and it's going to rotate about the origin 
as the center of rotation, it's going to come up like this and stay the same distance away from the origin. See how it's doing that? And then it would rotate around, and it would be here. So it stayed the same distance away. See that? So be careful when you're doing your rotations. So we went over this in video 9.4c. I just want to review it with you real quick so you understand the rotations. If we're rotating 90 degrees, that's a positive 90 degrees, we're going to go clockwise with our rotation. We multiply each x coordinate by a negative 1, then we switch the x and y coordinates. This becomes the new x and that will become the new y. If we're going negative 90 degrees for our rotation, we're going counterclockwise, the opposite of a clock. We multiply each y coordinate by negative 1, then switch the x and y coordinates. So that's the new x and that's the new y. If we're doing a 180 degree rotation, we multiply both coordinates by negative 1, and we do not switch x and y. We multiply both by negative 1, and that's it. We have negative x, negative y. After we do a sequence of transformations as translations, reflections, and or rotations, the image will be the same shape and size as the pre-image. The image and pre-image will be congruent regardless of their orientation. So this little triangle has his little smallest vertex angle on this side, and he has it on this side. They have the same size and shape, so they are congruent. Doesn't matter which way they're facing, their sides would have the same lengths and their angles would have the same angle measures. We're finished with Module 9 and moving on to Module 10. We're going to talk about dilations. Have a wonderful day and join me for Module 10. Bye.